I think, sappy moment, which is very unlike me. I love sappy moments. Yeah. I mean, I think Joey and I were meant to meet. Like, all of these things were supposed to happen. This and is, we're going to dub a Boys to Men song over this. Go, go right ahead. <laughs> Hands up, heads down, shake it off, turn around. We kicking dirt, we gain it round. We do it right, do the heel right now. Sometimes you just look at something and you're like, hmm, that works. So, welcome Makes to Super sense. Trooper. Um, Adrian Jansen, the CEO of 212 Benefits, mm -hmm. Jacksonville, Florida's finest. <laughs> um, this is either the first or second episode. Okay. We we filmed something with Lewis Mosley. Excuse yes. me, Lewis Mosley. Did you oh. realize that he pronounced his name Mosley? No. Nobody does. <laughs> but that's, he just doesn't correct anybody. Um, oh, man. I feel kind of bad about that. He doesn't. I mean, he's accepted it now. Okay. It's um, just, yeah. Uh, with BAS in the UK, mm -hmm. we did like a... We didn't even have the name Super Trooper then. We're going to have to go back and insert this. Oh, I'm touching the microphone. We're going to have to put that in his show. If we count that, I don't know if we're counting that as a show or not. So this yeah. could be the first episode. That would be exciting. I mean, it's exciting to be the second one. It is. Yeah. There's a Feel joke pretty about honored. number two in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, my kids aren't here, so we can't make we can't make number two jokes. Anyway, so speaking of your kids. Yes. Um, your lovely husband, Joey, is here in town. He is. I'm guessing. what Now, what made you guys decide for you to be here instead of him or you and him? Yeah. So he and I usually kind of divide up the workload during the summer. It's just easier that way rather than trying to coordinate having the children either with us or with someone else. It's just easier that right. way. Um. He suggested that I go. I don't know that. Um, I mean, he's done a few podcasts and interviews and that sort of thing in other scenarios. And so I think maybe he just kind of wanted me to have a chance. Right. Um, also, the girls voted because <laughs> they are going to the pool that dad is more fun at oh, the pool than I am. Okay. So I guess, you know, I don't know if... Um, that means that I won the honor to come here, or if I just was not invited to the pool, so right. I am here, <laughs> however well, you look a, at it. I think this is more fun. Yeah, I mean, for me it is. I'm not yes. great at throwing kids in the air and going off diving boards and right. all that sort of thing. Yeah. So for our listeners to be clear, mm -hmm. the whole family is here in Gunnersville right now. Whole family. For, the, for a week-long summer vacation. Yes, yeah. And when I say you're here, that means Joey's back at the pool at the Airbnb. Joey's at the pool. Yep. Or he's at the Gunnersville Recreational Center. Oh, the rec center? The rec center. Yes. Oh, that just took <laughs> me back. So we used to walk to the rec center, uh, probably middle school and early high school before driving. I've got vivid memories of walking from the little apartment I showed you where I lived. We would yeah. walk all the way to the rec center. That's a long walk. It, well, I mean, yeah, but when you're a young kid in Alabama, it's yeah. not. What else? Is what else to do? do? <laughs> There was no cable television. Um, yeah. And um, I remember girls I had crushes on at the pool that summer. <laughs> like just memories came rushing back. Yeah. Britt, uh, our producer back there, Britt, do you have rec center pool memories as well? The same pool. I used to <laughs> like, like two blocks over close to the pig. And I walked there. Close yeah. to the pig. Also the known as the Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. Oh, the pig. Okay. I didn't uh, get that. His kid and his kids are there too. Ellie's there with his kids. Oh, Britt's kids are at the rec center. They're at the rec center wow. with the Jansen kids. It was so funny, Britt. I don't know if you knew this this morning, but uh, Joey and I met for um, coffee here this morning. And Ellie came in with the twins uh, and Mac. Also, Mac must have just hit his head or something. He was holding a, something on his head. I don't know if you know about that. But Check on him later. They walked in and one of the twins just yelled at the top of his lungs, Scott! Hey, Scott! And every it was crowded. Everybody turned around. I was like, hey, buddy. He wanted to tell me about his new shorts. So. I mean, new shorts are exciting. <laughs> they were exciting, exciting stuff. Yes. When you're when you're five, I mean, isn't that amazing though? New shorts are cool. Nobody talks about that as an adult. You know? No, no, no don't get all excited. I'm not yelling about my <laughs> new shorts. Although I feel that way sometimes that they fit really well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you can be excited about really simple things. Yeah. Yeah. And then I looked over and they were climbing all over the counter at the coffee shop <laughs> and, and Ellie was grabbing them down and Joey and I were like, man, yep. like for the fifth time in 48 hours, I'm like, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. It's five kids. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's impressive. It's a, it's incredible. And four and five are difficult ages. I remember with both girls, those were just really tough, tough years to like exist out in the world. We didn't eat out a lot. We didn't no, go to restaurants right. a lot, you know, because they just were loud and wanted to tell people about very random things and stand well, on top of chairs and well wait till you get the girls that are about 14 to 17. <laughs> oh yeah i'm not in a rush by the way either. i have surprises for everybody oh so okay. i was a little late i went over to the coffee shop i was going to get a decaf i was going to get rid of real coffee although i cautioned him against it i thought it was too late he <laughs> wanted a real coffee he didn't get one because they were closed yeah. however this happened the alcohol rep came in because moody oh. brews is the coffee shop next door and they're, they're doing beer and wine now. Okay. And I was like, you know, maybe instead of like getting a coffee, it's a podcast. It's happy hour-ish. It is. We have Sweet, Sweet Java. Baby yeah. Java. And guess what? What? Dustin, the owner, said, reach in there and grab. I said, I would like two. Okay. And he said, okay, we'll reach in there and just grab two random ones because there's Two or three more, I put a stamp on the bottom of them so it's random, it's a buy one, get one free. And so, hold on. That's the first one I pulled out, pow. <laughs> you need to go play Powerball today. The second one I pulled out. Oh my gosh, look at you. I two in a row. I got boxes <laughs> to get two free. And then he's like, you've got to do that. He's got a customer, Johnny Smith, Johnny will never look that, see, watch this, but if you do for some reason. <laughs> who's been buying these like every day, trying to get one of these. Oh and no, and, and you just two told them, took them all. So I had to do that. So also, for you and I, Adrian. Yes. I have glasses. Nice, all right. Britt just gets to have, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep this where we can. can't drink more than one. Britt, can you just come get one of these? That's yours. Would you, would you want one? Yeah, okay. sure, I'd love one. So I'm, I haven't had this. I know one thing is, the name Sweet Baby. Sweet baby oh, oh, there's Brett. You're like coming right aggressively. At me. <laughs> there's a sweet baby Jesus too. That's a beer. Oh, yeah, uh, oh. that was also the son of man too, by the way. Yeah, kind of a big deal. Yeah. Also, that line is credited to Will Ferrell. He's been coming up a lot during this trip. He has. He has. We had. I don't a, know what gonna, that means. I'm going to give <laughs> you. We well, had. Can a, I leave this right here? Val and I. Um, took the Jansons out on the boat yesterday mm -hmm. with uh, Maggie Marie and Elizabeth Jane. Yes. And their two children, also known as Maggie and... Maggie and Ellie. Ellie. Which is funny because we have a Maggie and an Ellie. I know. Within our world. Well, Britt's wife is Ellie. Yep. Then we have... Maggie uh, Quinn. Maggie Quinn. Mm -hmm. with the trip at Atlanta. Yes. Um, and because sisters are wonderful and can turn everything into a fight, we, we can't talk about that in front of them because Ellie got to meet her name twin and Maggie did not get to meet her name twin. Oh, that's... So it's like well, salt on the wound wow. to bring that topic up so, between the two of them. So we're going to have to get Maggie Quinn. Yeah, I mean, we have it. to. Yeah, right, that's Maggie what I Quinn. said. We're going to have to just fly to Atlanta for right. a day mm -hmm. so that Maggie Jansen can meet Maggie Quinn. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, welcome it to the Smells console. delicious. Oh, man, that is Java. That is really... <laughs> mm. Who makes this? Dewclaw. Dewclaw. Oh, Dewclaw. You know, they have some kind of blueberry something that I used to get at Old Town Stockhouse, which is a local restaurant. We are going there tonight for dinner. Oh, you're going to Old Town Stockhouse tonight. We are, yes. We have uh, reservations. If you, what time is your reservation? 6.30. Okay, so we got to get you out of here in a good time. Yeah. I'm going to call and make sure you get uh, the best server. Oh, Okay. Actually, I'm not going to say the best because one of them might stumble onto this. I'm not going to call <laughs> at all. But my you don't have a favorite server. They're all good. well. I actually probably have to because my daughter Madeline's best friend's name is Lex, and Lex is a server there. Oh, okay. Her other best friend Noah moved to New York, so Noah's not there anymore. Okay. I don't think there's a. No I don't think there's anybody else I would offend. Okay. By making sure you got Lex tonight. All right. And Lex is very funny and entertaining. Okay. And a great server. I'm sure she's yeah. working. I'm going to take just a second. I know. This is, I don't really even, I didn't think I would, liked porters, but maybe I do. What maybe is this the is a new um, thing? It's okay, got now, chocolate and peanut butter and coffee. Espresso bean infused chocolate peanut butter porter. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of delicious words. It is really good. Uh, 6.2% uh, alcohol by volume. 
Okay. So a little bit aggressive here. So we're that probably only, we're only gonna have one. That's less than a glass of wine though, isn't it? Is is one glass Maybe. of wine more than six? I this would so. be like two American beers. Two American beers. Like two course lights. <laughs> this would be the same alcohol content as, as like one and as one point like eight five. One point eight five. So I think Coors Light and the middle light are like 3.2, 3.4. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm totally making that up, but I think that's pretty I don't, I mean, accurate. You sound like you're confident, so I would believe you. I've been fooling people since about 1984. <laughs> that's oh, why I okay. turned 14. I think I was, no, oh. way before that, way before that. I was going to say, that's, yeah. Um, by the way, I don't, this is for the first or second episode of Super Trooper. <laughs> I think only our best friends will be tuned in by this point. Probably. Yeah. Um, but that's really okay. That's all we really want to listen. Right. There's this thing called, I think this is going to be a hallmark of Super Trooper. Okay. And that I'm just going to be all over the place. Yeah. Why not? So there is, I don't know if Malcolm Gladwell, is that the right? No, that's not who did this. Seth Godin okay. said this. Do you know Seth Godin? I do. Okay. Which, by the way, I talked to him and I've tried to get him to speak several times. He won't travel mm -hmm. anymore. Oh. I mean, he'll go by train or car, but he won't. He won't fly. He won't fly. Well. And he's got really good reasons for it. But I, yeah. I really love his, I just, I just think he's a good human. And they're also obviously very bright. Mm -hmm. But he has a thing called the smallest Bible audience. Have you heard this? I don't think so. In general. I'm going to probably get this wrong. Apologize to Seth and anybody <laughs> who knows what this really is. But in general, it's when, many, when maybe many people think about marketing, they're thinking about how do I reach the most people? How do I get a million followers or 100,000 followers? Or And he's like, how many people do you really need to be successful? Right? Yeah. What's the smallest viable audience okay. of almost super fans, right? Like, let's just imagine that you were marketing to CFOs. Mm-hmm. But every CFO relationship was worth $100,000. I mean, you need like 20 fans, right? You need 20 right. CFOs. So if you had 20 people listening to your podcast, your show, whatever, that would be probably the smallest viable audience to reach a certain goal. And it's just a great way to think about marketing rather mm -hmm. than this sort of shotgun approach to try to get as many people watching as possible. It's like, who do you really want to, who do you really want to listen? Mm -hmm. So I don't have, really have a story other than that came to my mind. <laughs> yeah. But. I think that's applicable. We were talking about our podcast that we have at 212 Benefits, What the Health Just Happened. What the Health Just Happened. What the Health Just Happened. Look it happened. up on all your podcasts. Yes. Platforms. Available streaming, all sorts of different places. And we've done about 20 episodes. So a little bit more than two, but still nowhere near, you know, expert status. And we have this conversation often, like, what is the point? Who is it that we're actually trying to reach? Do we have aspirations of turning this into some type of, you know, machine where we're just cranking out episode after episode and we're trying to reach a really wide audience? And for us, I don't think that's the case and we're okay with it. But when we have that conversation with people about the purpose of the show, why we have it and how we use it, they're sometimes a little bit taken aback that we aren't trying to cast this really wide net mm -hmm. to get our name out there, whatever that means, right? Um, because I don't, I don't know how effective that always is, mm -hmm. the wider you try to make everything. So I like that something that was just kind of a conversation between us is actually something that other people, like maybe we were doing it on purpose this whole right. time and we just didn't even know. <laughs> we did it on purpose. <laughs> you know, I have had this, I would say a love-hate relationship with social media for a mm -hmm. couple of years with True um, for a couple of reasons. One, it feels self-promoting sometimes, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And especially if you're on, like LinkedIn's probably the best platform for us at True. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of stuff on there I don't like. There's a lot of people that are self-promoting. There's a lot of people that talk a lot that I know aren't successful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they're not good people. They're not trying. And right. But it's it's I don't want to be lumped in with certain people sometimes. But that's a me problem. That's not a them problem, you know. <laughs> but it still is I will. And, and that's that's kind of the hate part. The love is anytime we do a bunch of stuff, we mm -hmm. get inbound leads. Right. I'm I mean, sure. There's yeah. not a lot of 
industries where that really happens, where we put out good content Mm -hmm. and agencies call us and say, I want to talk to you about what it means to be part of True. And so most people would say, well, why don't you do more stuff? Mm -hmm. And I think there's just a fine line between what feels like marketing and self-promotion and what is genuinely sharing. Um, And it's without the expectation of return. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I want... We're going to do another podcast called Cacao, our little kindness always matters brand, which is going to be nothing, but we're trying to going to try to get interesting guests mm-hmm. outside of insurance, right? Just to have conversations. But I think this is going to be much the same, where we just want to have interesting conversations with interesting people. We do want to help promote our agencies, right? right. We do want to have two twelve to have content and be able to express themselves and learn through these experiences. But it's just this weird thing around marketing and sales and smallest viable audience and self-promotion and Mm -hmm. social and content creation and influence all these things are a little bit icky feeling sometimes do you ever do you ever feel icky when you're doing your (laughs) show or or not because you're not really trying to market it like i don't know just respond to my rambling there yeah no it makes sense. I think that we have a lot of the same internal struggle, right? So like 212 technically has a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. We have a LinkedIn page. You know, we're all pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, and I have felt that that same push and pull with social media. I know that it is a viable way to kind of build your brand, whether it's for the company or for yourself, you know, personally. Um, I do. I do feel the ick when it comes to thinking of things to put on Facebook and Instagram, because that feels like it has to be like packaged and um, a little more like tailored, created, crafted. It doesn't feel like I'm just sharing something Mm -hmm. about what our company is genuinely already doing. It feels manufactured specifically for that platform. And I don't like that. And so you'll notice that if you go back and look at all of our Instagram posts, it'll be um, like three weeks of every single Tuesday, I'm posting something consistently. And then for like six months, there will be nothing <laughs> because I will just give up and not have anything right. else that I want to say or want to do. And then, you know, I'll get, I'll, I'll see somebody else doing something cool and I'm like, man, I should really get back on. And then there'll be a spurt of two to three weeks where, you know, I'm trying to think of different things. And then I'm like, I'm doing all of this for what? Like two likes. And one of them is Joey liking the account back. <laughs> right. The other one's Eric liking the account back. And then like one third random person. And it feels like so much work. And then I don't really know what return we're getting on that. And it doesn't feel like it's reflective of anything about me yeah. or the company. Um, I don't ever feel that way on the radio show because it is very much like this. We are inviting people on the show that we just think are cool. Mm -hmm. And we are talking with them about their job, um, their personal history, their background. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of weaves in and out of this healthcare, healthy habits, um, but anybody from any background can speak to either mental health and wellness, physical health and and well-being. and so it kind of just wanders and it's it's just us just talking. So I don't ever feel that way. Right. Um, even when we then share it on social media, it was just a genuine, mm-hmm. normal conversation. Um, I think that means you should do none of the stuff that you don't like to do that feels right. forced and awkward <laughs> and do more of the stuff that you're enjoying. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That is why I think our last Instagram post from 212 Benefits is from maybe February of yeah. this year, maybe March, mm-hmm. if I'm being generous. Um, but, I, you know, that's that's okay. And I love when we get done, every guest is like, that was so much fun. Mm-hmm. They have a great time. Um, and they can't wait to get the link to the episodes and share it with their friends, their family, their their colleagues, post it themselves. Um and that's just nice to see people, you know, reacting in that way to something that felt pretty easy for us to do. There wasn't a whole lot of mm-hmm. planning behind it. Well, more of that. Yeah. All right, I'm going to jump to a totally <laughs> different topic. Okay, here we go. Adrian. Uh, yes. what, was your, what was your maiden name? Uh, Pack, P-A-C-K. Oh, you like, so like 
Do you know the artist Anderson Pack? Mm-mm. Oh. I'm only cool Should because I? of my kids. Oh, okay. uh, should you, knowing your taste of music, yes. Okay. You are also a fellow lover of R&B and hip hop. I am. Anderson Pack is a little bit sort of modern R&B slash, what genre would you put Anderson Pack in? What you just said, that's pretty close. Um, yeah. Um, it's, and it's, it's Anderson dot, it is a dot in there somewhere. My kids would <laughs> laugh when I was growing up because I'll be Anderson dot Pack. Yeah. Not like it's just Anderson Pack. <laughs> but it's P-A-A-K, is it P-A-A-K? So let's do let's do a quick um, rundown of your of, of you of me. Okay, yeah. sure. So were you born in Virginia? I was. Yes, very small town south of Richmond, Virginia, called Colonial Heights, Virginia, mm-hmm. uh, which most people have never heard of. You like, know, like Gunnersville, Alabama, kind of like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun connection though. Today, when we went to the Lake Gunnersville Museum, mm-hmm. they had a Civil War flag on display that had been flown at the fort in Petersburg, Virginia, which was the neighboring town where I grew up and like just a little creek separated us. Mm-hmm. And I have been to that battleground oh. many times. Um, Do you know why that happened? Um, no. Because we're in the matrix. <laughs> None of this is real. <laughs> I I'm, I'm, day by day, I'm thinking this <laughs> might be true. Although this is a pretty good matrix if we're having to have, if we're getting to have a sweet baby java with friends Mm -hmm. um this is kind of working i mean i'm not really mad about whatever was designed for me it seems very cool that's lovely yeah you've got a good designer i do yeah Yeah. okay (laughs) so um what were you what were you like as a little what was little adrian (laughs) like oh that's an interesting question um i was um pretty precocious and talkative when I was very young, Mm -hmm. according to my parents. I don't really remember. um, This is where your girls get it from. Yes, I think that's where they make it from. (laughs) Uh, What's interesting, Ellie, my youngest, was extremely introverted until about a year ago. And then Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, she just kind of came out of her shell. Mm -hmm. Um, And now we have two very chatty, boisterous, confident girls, which is great. Um, I think I kind of had the inverse journey. I was very loud and chatty and, and talkative until my family moved from Virginia to Orlando. Mm-hmm. So I went from a town with a handful of a couple thousand people uh, to Orlando, Florida, which as most people know <laughs> is many more than a couple thousand people. Uh, so I think at that point I kind of shifted a little bit, became a little bit more introverted Mm -hmm. just because i obviously didn't know a lot of people what age was this i was in seventh grade so about 13 time it was tough yeah Yeah. it was not a super fun moving i do um i'm thankful that we did move Mm -hmm. uh florida's you know brought so many great opportunities for us and our family and um Speaking of the Matrix, another random side note, one of my best friends in Virginia growing up had a poster in her room for the University of Florida because her dad had gone there. Oh. And I was like, that's so, so random. She wanted to go there. I'm like, that's I, why would anyone want to go to the University of Florida? <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Many people think hmm. that. So when we did move to Florida and people started asking me in middle school, you know, well, are you a Gator fan or are you a Seminoles fan or mm-hmm. do you like Miami? I remembered her poster and I was like, I'm a University of Florida fan. I am a Gator fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of stuck. It's where I ended up going to school. That's how I met Joey. We met at a party on campus. Okay, let's just let's let's, <laughs> let's just dive into that right now because he's not here to defend himself. He is not. Yeah, um, I'm fascinated by the first glance, the mm-hmm. first meeting. Okay. So, who saw who first? Like, really, who noticed the other one at first, or was there like a instant like eye contact thing? Um. I'm gonna say I think he must have noticed me first because I don't oh, actually yes, have mm-hmm. recollection of meeting for the first time. Okay. Uh, he says that we were at a party at his apartment that his roommate was having. I don't really remember him being there. Okay. So I'm voting Joey noticed first. Did, 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 did he reach out? Did he, <laughs> did he was like, hey girl, what's up? Or did you see him again at a, another function some So I saw him again a few days later, because uh, this was sophomore year, beginning of sophomore year, 
And so most people were still kind of trying to find their little, Mm -hmm. you know, friend groups and figure themselves out. And um, we were at dinner at a very fancy Mexican restaurant chain in Gainesville. Um, And he started talking to me because we were sitting next to each other at dinner. And how did you get get next to each other? I think that uh, he might maybe he sat next to me on purpose. I don't know. I just sat down Um, and then he was there and chatting with me and I thought he was kind of annoying. He kept trying to talk to me and I didn't really feel like talking. Right. Um, And then he called me maybe like a day or two later. Old school phone or was there a cell phone involved at this point? We had cell phones, but I mean, they didn't, texting was like very cumbersome. You had to do the whole like type all the way to the, yeah, yeah, Yeah. it was awful. So he physically actually called me, asked me out on a date, but I had a boyfriend. Oh, drama. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Black thickens. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I said no. And I don't remember if he kept calling or if he texted or if we just saw each other because we had mutual friends, but he was pleasantly persistent. I eventually agreed to go to dinner just as friends. While you had your boyfriend? While I still had my boyfriend. Oh. No. As one does. I just wanted him to as stop. As one does? As one does. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think ones do that. <laughs> I just wanted him to stop asking. He just wouldn't stop asking. Right. You know, last night, how Ellie would not stop asking Val to jump in the water. Miss Hot Dog, you mean? Miss Hot, Mrs. Hot Dog. Mrs. Hot Dog. <laughs> yes. So she just did it. That mm-hmm. is a Jansen, a Jansen thing that she got from him. Um, so, yeah. Showed up at our friend dinner at Stonewood. No, no, no. Which that. is like, um, trying to think of what that would be similar to. So, you know. Bonefish is all yeah. seafood. It's kind of like that, but steak. Okay. Which is not somewhere that you would go for like a casual dinner with an acquaintance or a friend. Right. And when I got there, he had red roses laid out. Joe in the- <laughs> Jansen, you sly dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, How old were both of you? You're so you're like 19 or 20? Yes. I was 19. He was 20. Okay. Yeah. And I... Uh, after we left dinner that night, I called my boyfriend and broke up with him. Wow. I know. Just I like that night. Just like that. Yeah. I mean, you know. Joey was just like, <laughs> <laughs> that girl will be mine. I know. Yeah. And then you started dating right then? Uh, like two weeks later. Yeah. And that was it. Who was and the first one that said, I love you? Oh, my gosh, man. Um... I don't know. Oh, come on. I really don't. I mean, I think I think I did. I think I said it first. It was, was there any alcohol involved? I mean, it was college. It was okay. 19 and 20. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I think yes. we were just drinking all the time. Okay. So, really, probably any decision is tinged with, you know, some some alcohol. Um, <laughs> he's going to be so mad at me for telling the story, which is why I need to tell this story. So, for our six-month anniversary... He took me to the Outback Steakhouse in Gainesville. <laughs> okay. So we're going from Stonewood to Outback. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> he gave me a promise ring and said that we were going to get married someday. Mm. And that that ring was, you know, a sign of that commitment, um, which I still have that ring. It is broken a couple of times, mm. but I've had it repaired and it's just sitting in the closet still have it he was smitten <laughs> he was <laughs> roses on the first date promise ring of marriage at six months at six months yeah man he felt hard he did yeah uh, what so did the other boyfriend ever try to get back in the game <laughs> no 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 yeah i mean i can be pretty you know straightforward and just oh, kind of could see that cut to the chase yeah. so yeah that was it wow so, and then um what was your you were an education major Uh, well actually i was a psychology major okay and i have a minor in education i didn't decide until my last year that i wanted to go into education and at that point i had over 120 hours Mm -hmm. um and i was on a scholarship and so going back to do that wasn't really an option i would have had to pay for myself to you know um do probably two to three more semesters to get the actual education degree. So, um, psychology major, secondary education minor, and religion minor, oddly enough. Right. Which, I mean, you know. Yeah. 
Um, and you can, <clears throat> in the state of Florida, you can have a degree in basically anything. Mm -hmm. And then you just go through a year of training courses through your county. Um, and then you're certified to teach after that. Do you, you would be a good therapist, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. You yeah. have a very direct calming, sort of, <laughs> but also very direct. Yeah. I said direct twice. Um, how long were you a teacher? I was in education for 13 years. So mm -hmm. six of those years I taught in the classroom. Right. And I was student facing the other seven. Um, I did professional development and I trained teachers. So I did like adult education. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is harder, a kid or, or adult education? Which is more challenging? Um, the teachers, for I sure. I would think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a challenge, and um, it's it's really difficult to have some of these conversations um, because most people who go into teaching just have such a kind spirit and mm -hmm. a, a kindness about them, that sense of altruism that they really are there to try and help. Right. And so to have conversations with people whose heart is in the right place and to have to have conversations with them like, oh, well, you know, you're really kind of missing the mark here. Um, that feels very personal to right. them. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned a few moments ago, I can be a bit direct <laughs> about things. Right. Uh, so that was that was a challenge for me when I first transitioned. Um, was learning how to have those conversations coming from a loving place. Mm -hmm. um, that took some time. What's I'm, I'm gonna? I think we need another podcast to talk about the educational system in the United States. Oh Lord! But we're not we don't have time for that today. <laughs> no, not today. When I'm, I'm fast forwarding to you sure. deciding to get in the insurance and the employee yeah. benefits industry. Yes. When did that happen? Um, let's see. So it would have been twenty. Well, in 2016, Joey had left our firm mm -hmm. and come back at at that point. And our founder and owner at the time, Ray Strickland, had told Joey um, that he would like for Joey to take over the company. So let someday. me just give a little background. Joey was at this. Yep. Was that two twelve uh, benefits? But we were called Benefit Advisors. You're, back then. you're right. He yeah. was there. Yep. Then left. He did. And went to. Another small Another agency. agency. Yeah. And then when he came back is when Ray said, I want you to take over yes. someday. Yeah. Okay. Continue. And um, so, you know, just being a good listener and, and trying to help him and, and support him. We had all sorts of conversations, brainstorming, like he, Joey is really self-aware, which I think is a great gift and mm -hmm. something that um, for some people, it takes time to learn that he seems to just kind of be that way. Uh, naturally, which I think is great. And he was very aware from the beginning. I love the side of the business that I am in. I am into insurance and compliance and growing that business and making connections, meeting new people. I don't enjoy creating structure, processes, procedures. So he knew he needed someone that was geared towards that. So we would sit around and brainstorm all the time trying to think of people that we knew personally and professionally that we thought would be good at that. And he would always end the conversation by, but my number one choice is still you. Mm -hmm. um, Joey's a heck of a salesperson. Yeah, I'm absolutely. realizing now. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't give up. He's persistent. It doesn't really matter to him if it takes a mm -hmm. long time. Right. Um, so yeah, that conversation was happening over the course of, of several years. And, um, I just wasn't I wasn't ready to, to do it. I loved public education and all that it stood for and really felt like that's where my calling was. And um, my last year working for the county, I had some really uncomfortable experiences, mm -hmm. um, some things that were, it, you know, it's it's just like any type of government system. It's political right. and there are different motives and objectives and all that sort of thing. And um, Again, being direct, I had kind of gotten myself into a position where I was at odds with some of you know my colleagues and that sort of thing about what they were pushing out. And I just didn't agree with it. I didn't feel like it was right for the students or the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last day of the school year in 2018, I was called to my principal's office. And 
of the position that I held, which was like a literacy trainer, specialist, curriculum development, all of those positions had been eliminated across the district. And I had been surplused to a school that was about 80 minutes from our house. Um, and I was supposed to report there right. August 1st. And By the I way, said, only a government <laughs> industry, uh, agency would say something like surplused. Oh, yeah. That is such a made up word. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you 80 miles. So you're like, no way. Yeah, no way. The girls were still too young. They weren't even at the same school. Um, and I said, um, I actually just think I quit. And I came home and told Joey, I think I would like to take you up on that offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what, what year was this? That was the summer of 2018. So okay. five, I'm coming up on five years. Wow. Well, it's really amazing. Well, I guess it shouldn't be amazing knowing who you are, but five years is not that long. Mm-mm. To tr- in the grand scheme of things, to yeah. go from like I think I might want to try this to be like yeah. running the to be the CEO of the organization. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheers for that. Oh yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, what are there any? This is going to be a big question, mm-hmm. or not? It might not be. What are some of the biggest surprises? Are there any surprises? Like you, you said yes. I'm in. I think I want to take you up. Mm-hmm. Now you're five years in looking back. Yes. Is there anything that's been like, wow, I just didn't think that. I, this is a surprise to me. Um, yeah, that is interesting. To I think positive or the negative. It doesn't have to be a negative. It could be yeah. positive. I think I think I have a surprises that have happened on, on both ends of the spectrum. Um, negatively, Joey had uh, on the negative side of things, I guess, um, which is really not even that bad, but it just was a surprise to me. Some of the things that I knew Joey was um, learning about around 2018 and things that he was interested in and all sorts of like direct uh, relationships between facilities and that sort of thing that he and I had kind of chatted about. Um, It was very surprising to me how difficult that Mm -hmm. side of the industry was and still is Mm -hmm. reading about it on paper and and reading articles it seems like this is very logical this totally (laughs) makes sense we should just do it like this um and i think that's probably true of any industry right like you go into it with Mm -hmm. these rose-colored glasses and you're like i'm gonna make the world a better place and Mm -hmm. if we would just do it this way it would be easier um so that i think that was surprising to me in some ways um how simple it it kind of appeared from the outset but then really how complex mm-hmm. that that is um which maybe shouldn't have been a surprise but it was for me being you know naive at the time I, I, it's that's an interesting um comment and thought you know, so many disruptors come in and are very effective in industries because of that because mm-hmm. they're like well this makes total sense right they don't have the baggage around well, it is difficult. Direct contracting between facilities and networks. And us, it's a very complex thing. Right. But as you were saying that, I was sort of reflecting like it really should be easier. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it will be someday. We'll work on it. So a question. Mm-hmm. I don't think I know Eric Ross. Yes. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. Your, your business partner. <laughs> uh, larger than life personality. Yes. When? when where did he come into the picture? Was he a lifelong friend of someone's? What happened? What is how? How did that relationship start? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so personal friend that we met. Um, I mean, before the girls were born, after college, in that weird in between phase where you're pretending to be an adult. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of his, you know, wife's friends was dating one of our friends, and then we just kind of wound up being at all the same places and right. um, had kids around the same time, which bonded us and and kind of kept our families close. His oldest son, my youngest daughter, like best buddies um, since the day that they were born. So he's been a friend for a long time. Um, I'm trying to remember what year, I guess it would have been, it was 2020. So about two years into this adventure with Joey, um, our, our culture was a huge concern for me. Mm-hmm. We had people that had had worked for the company since the 1980s um, and figuring out how to shift that and how to move that was a a huge challenge for me, Um, especially coming from an industry where people um, 
are, are a bit different. And again, like we were saying earlier, a little bit more altruistic, a little mm-hmm. more kind. And so I, I had experience with dealing with those types of dynamics, you know, private, small company where people have been working there for a very long time. That was very different for me. We um, had several people that had left the company. We needed to recruit and then hire and train um, kind of this new group of employees that would that would really represent us and who mm-hmm. we were. And Joey and I are both really pragmatic. Neither of us are very um, silly, <laughs> which I guess sounds like maybe not a great word, but I think you need that playful dynamic mm-hmm. in a company if you are aspiring to have the type of culture that we knew that we wanted to have. Um, we wanted to feel different. Mm-hmm. We wanted to be different. We wanted our salespeople to feel different. Um, we wanted our company to feel like a family. And uh, Eric was kind of in the market for another job. His position was coming to an end at the company where he was working and had been sold. Mm-hmm. And you know it was time for him to move on. Um, and I was like, I think he's that perfect uh, kind of you know, other end of the personality spectrum, mm-hmm. if you will, yeah. to complement the two of us. But he can he can be very serious when he needs to be. Mm-hmm. But he brings this sense of levity to our team, and he's so good at um, things that Joey and I are not great at. And um, like Joey and I never would have left somewhere and gone on vacation for an entire week if it were up to the two of us. Right. We are like workaholics. Want to be in the office all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he actually encouraged us after the owner's meeting, like, no, you need to, you need to go. You guys will have a blast. It'll be wonderful. Work will still be here when you get back. Um, so, you know, we, I think it took maybe six months to convince Ray to let us (laughs) hire him because he too was like, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, and now he says it took three of you to replace one of me. (laughs) (laughs) But I actually kind of think that's true, right? Like the personality Mm -hmm. you need to start a company, to be an entrepreneur, the person who begins it all is totally different than the personalities you need to carry it into its next iteration. Yeah. You see a lot of, I I have the weirdest Twitter. (laughs) I follow really weird. I don't follow any friends. Yeah. There's nothing around my personal life, which is why I think I enjoy Twitter and I don't get caught up in like the yucky part of it. Mm-hmm. I, I have this huge um, uh, sort of VC tech people I follow um, and a lot of venture folks. And yeah, the, the founding CEO is typically a totally different personality than the person that's got to really scale that. You know, mm-hmm. once they go public and start really growing and scaling, you, you don't quite need the crazy <laughs> you know, kind of insane work and obsession yeah. that that a founding CEO has. Right. But they have to have that to begin it. So, yeah. And, yeah. and most of the time, it, that person is not does not have the personality to do the job. Um, it's running. I mean, start getting a company started is just weird. I'm sure. You know, it's yeah. just weird. Even me doing something as small of a skill is true. It took a lot of weird things in my <laughs> life to happen. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you know, I went through a divorce, which meant at the, at the time I had my kids half the time. My ex-wife and I just shared custody. Mm-hmm. So I had a week without the kids, basically, where I could obsess and work 18 hours a day. Yeah. Um, I would not have done that if I would have been in the marriage with the kids. It's just I wouldn't have had the time. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not recommending that strategy to anyone <laughs> at all. But it's why you no. see these founders that are like, they start these companies at 22, 24, 28 years old. Right, because they don't have responsibility. Can. Yeah. Um, and I happened to be divorced in a town like Lake Gunnersville, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing wrong with Lake Gunnersville, <laughs> but there's just not a ton of dating options here. <laughs> so I was able to have this weird obsession for the first few years of True, mm-hmm. which is to take it and just do all this crazy work to get it started. Um, but now... Okay, so you brought Crazy Uncle on board. <laughs> yes. Um, hot sauce. Yeah. I love him, by the way. Um, yeah. And then that was 2020. So that was mm-hmm. during COVID. 
Yes, his first day was February 28th oh, of 2020. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, super great timing. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he had many moments during quarantine of like, what did I get myself into? Yes. This is bananas. Which, I mean, I think to some extent, we all kind of went through that, you know, a lot of time for reflection and that sort of thing. Um, I actually think though, so I, I said earlier that our families are really close. And so it was lovely. We kind of made this little pod with one mm -hmm. other family and we were able to um, kind of share the kids between all of us. And some of the parents that were not working full time would do some of the lessons with the mm -hmm. kids so that those of us who were working would have the opportunity to get some things done. And so because we were all together, I think it it really laid a solid foundation for the three of us because it gave us really quiet time mm -hmm. <laughs> to figure out what we wanted to do, how we wanted it to look, who would be in charge of what. Um, and we've tried really hard to stick to that and, and really not get into each other's lanes, mm -hmm. so to speak. So it was odd and weird. Um, but I think it was something, again, kind of like what you were saying, like not that I would recommend people just um, you know, themselves <laughs> quarantine <in> themselves <laughs> for two months and not go out into the world if they're thinking about taking over a company. It was just the, the, the timing of it and mm -hmm. it happened to work out for us. Um, and then when we, and of course we were in Florida, so it, it, our lockdown was much the same shorter. as here yes in alabama yes. <laughs> yeah uh so by the end of the summer you know we were back in the office and the kids went back to school that mm -hmm. fall so it was the right amount of time to be reflective to be strategic but not so long that we started really going off the rails with right <laughs> what we were planning to do so so now um yeah the summer of 2023 mm -hmm. you're firmly entrenched in a leadership position running the agency mm -hmm. what are your biggest challenges right now I mean, that's a great question i was just talking with val about this yesterday the, the number one challenge that i have and if anybody has any great ideas i'm open <laughs> to suggestions we have a hybrid workforce uh, the majority of our employees live within 45 minutes of one of our two brick and mortar offices so they do have the opportunity to come into the office if they choose. We do not mandate anything. We don't regulate anything. We let everyone just choose whatever they want. We have found that most people do come into the office about three to four days a week mm -hmm. pretty consistently. So I'm, I'm happy with that. The challenge that I have, and I just haven't figured out a, a good solution, everyone in both offices, Jacksonville and Ocala, they're separated by about two hours travel time in the car. They want to spend more time together. We have an event every February called Dream Day where we get together and just kind of dream up how to be better versions of ourselves, personally and professionally. And the comments in all of our surveys, you know, usually their favorite part is just getting to see each right. other. And they want more of that. But then when we schedule things or try to have things at one location versus the other, it can be really difficult to get everyone's schedules to line up. Mm -hmm. And then nobody really wants to do the virtual stuff. So I'm, I'm really struggling with how do I make you all come together right. and mandate it, but also still make it fun yep. so that you are... Um, you want to go of your own volition and that we are mm -hmm. not forcing you because nothing is worse than like forced team bonding. Forced family fun. We forced call it, we family call it. fun. That's what we call it. When it's we make the kids worst. do stuff. Yeah. Nobody likes that. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, d does Dream Day work? So does the, is it because it's once a year that that works? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I wonder if it has this like shiny we love it and we'll make the sacrifice once a year and oh we wish we could do it more mm -hmm. um i think that that might be why they love it so much yep. yeah and so maybe um that's just gonna have to be enough that might not quite be a problem this is a very i'm sure you've done this and thought about this yes but have you thought about just making it two times period we're not even going to try to force any more family fun <laughs> but we're going to have a dream day yeah. and then a dream catcher day Oh, dream catcher. Yeah. Interesting. How did we do? Did we catch our dreams? We, six months ago, we talked about dreams. We had a dream yeah. day. What's up with that? 
Hmm. How about that? Oh, just two times. Just two That's times. That's it. Yeah. And there's a suggestion. I wish I, I okay, Britt, we're going to have to order dream my catchers? red hot idea and oh. dream catcher. <laughs> I've, I've been saying for like two years, I want a red hot idea button. Yeah. That I hit it and it makes a siren. Oh. Because I think about once every month. Mm-hmm. It's usually not, it's usually talking with someone like you yeah. that I think I get a red hot idea. And I'm, I want to be like, hit it. I'm like, red hot idea alert. Where are you going to keep it? In your pocket? Um, right beside me all the time. <laughs> Everywhere I go. Just in the coffee shop with the red right. hot idea yeah. button right next to yeah, you. I'll just have it. I could wear like a Walkman. Like I could put it like we used to have our Walkmans on our side. And so I was just, Woo! Yeah, clip it to your belt like a pager. Yes. And then just... I did. I did. Were you in, in the pager? You weren't old enough to be in the pager phase. Oh, I had a pager. You had a pager. Oh yeah, I, I had, had a pager. Too, Those were just the for best. a hot second, and I loved every second of it. Oh, I, thought I thought it was, I was so, so imp- cool. We Jeez. said the same thing. <laughs> well, I would Mine, like to go on record as saying I don't want to let Dreamcatcher Day go by. I think that was a good solid idea. I think I do think it's a good idea, and so we do have a, a secondary event, but it's just like a fun. Again, kind of like that forest family fun. Yes. It's like volunteering together and lunch, which is lovely and nice. And about half of our staff does travel and and come to that. Um, but I do think maybe having something um, where we're all back together, because afterwards, Eric and I are kind of having, because uh, he and I take over that piece of it so that Joey can just continue to do the things that Joey does, mm-hmm. you know? And Eric and I follow that up and kind of weave um, like semi-annual reviews into it mm-hmm. to just have those those opportunities for feedback. Um, yeah, so instead of doing all of those one-off and virtually, it might make more sense to figure out how to coordinate that so that it was all just together in one place. I love it. I would like to yeah. invite the Dream Catcher Day. I think, yeah, well, you have to come to both. You can't catch the dreams if you don't have them in the first place. Well, true. I yeah. think actually I could. <laughs> I could just be involved in the I catching. think you could probably do whatever yeah. you'd like to do. Um, <laughs> so... I'm, again, all over the place. Yep. Um, you've been in Gunnersville since Saturday. Saturday, and today is Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> right. So almost a week. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts of Gunnersville? I mean, it's pretty incredible. Um, so Joey and I were kind of chatting about this last night. It's hard to separate the city from the friends that we have Mm -hmm. here, right? Because if we had just thrown a dart at a map and been lucky enough to choose this place as vacation, our experience here would more than likely be very different. Did we not already know so many wonderful people who lived here? Um, I think, you know, I, like I said earlier, grew up in a, a really small town. And when I left, I didn't appreciate anything about it. I was a teenager. I thought I knew everything. I thought where we lived was boring. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not like that everywhere we went, my parents knew people. And I did not like that anytime I went somewhere uh, because we got a mall in like the (laughs) mid nineties, which was very cool. Um, I did not like that all my parents' friends would tell them, you know, if they saw me at the mall or I'd have to stop and make small talk with them. And so it's been really nice kind of being back in that environment. And I appreciate that now so much as an adult and also as a parent. Um, And I think just that sense of community. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I I understand now kind of how your personality is the way that it is, because I feel like everyone here is mostly everyone is is that same way. Mm -hmm. Kind, genuine, welcoming. Yeah, or, or yeah. they're just very good at performing. Well, one of the two. Southern people usually kind of are, <laughs> even <laughs> whether they do like you or whether they don't. You leave feeling great from that interaction. <laughs> when Joey and I had coffee at Moody Brews here, yeah, um, this morning, he was laughing because every time somebody came in, like it was somebody I went to high school with, or, mm-hmm. um, it was a very festive morning in the uh, <laughs> coffee shop. One of my favorite people, Becky Stewart Smith. Her name is Smith now. We'll never see this. I might actually send this to her so she sees it. <laughs> but one of my classmates, do you know Becky Smith? Um, Stu, as we called her in high school. Um, I'm going to give like 50% credit to her for getting for me getting out of high school. <laughs> that's, um, a, now, that's a big percentage. It's a big percentage. It's probably more like 12. 
Yeah. I probably would have done it without her. Well, yes, I would have done it. Now, listen, I was plenty smart enough. You would have figured it out, yeah. I was sure. plenty smart enough. Yeah. Um, but once I got to about ninth grade, so I went to a little, I actually showed you where I went to. Yeah. So Claysville Elementary School mm-hmm. is a very small uh, county school. Still the same rock school that was built in the 20s. And I can, I'll never forget, like in fourth or fifth grade, we had a substitute teacher. And she stood up and said, okay, I want everybody to tell me who the smartest kid in the class is. Oh, no. I know. Isn't that weird? That's terrible. I, know. <laughs> I will never forget this. And everybody said, Scott, Scott, it's Scott. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Okay. That's now, not a terrible I'm, reaction. No. Now, this is so weird. I remember this. Um, and Amy, I don't remember what Amy's last name. She was so mad. <laughs> she thought she was the smartest and she un- she's very for sure was yeah because i had peaked probably <laughs> as being the smartest kid in the school in fifth grade in a very small rural school <laughs> it's just because i read all the time yeah and then i hit math i got to like algebra mm. i was like this is terrible i hate it it's no fun and then i had to apply myself and i was just you know i was a mess but becky um this is not a joke i did so my junior and senior year i, I didn't know where my locker was <laughs> like I legitimately just didn't know. I didn't know my combination. I didn't know where my books were. She kept my notebooks for every class. She pins so yeah. I could write and my calculator. Wow. She kept with her. So when I went to class. You were in all the same classes? Pretty much we were. Yeah. I, was, I was taking AP classes and stuff. So it was like I was same capable. People. Yeah. But I was like, Becky, can I have my stuff? <laughs> she would give it to me. <laughs> So she came in today and hasn't seen her. So Joey got to hear that story. Cheryl, uh, S-H-I-R-L, uh, uh, it's a male. Okay. Uh, came in, that, that he also graduated with Becky and I, so we got to catch up. And then Cheryl's wife is the mayor, uh, mayor our, our, our mayor, Lee Dollar now. Um, wow. And so that's the kind of stuff that happens in small towns. Yeah, it's so cool though. Yeah, I never thought I would be here. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was gone for 20 years and moved back. and. I actually even never thought, even after I had started True, before Miss Hot Dog came into my life. <laughs> now, Mrs. Hot Dog, Val, Val formerly Stramstifer. <laughs> I was like, there's no way I can be here. I'm going to have to move. Yeah. But now with, with her here, it's a very different feeling because it's I'm like sure. we're, I feel like we're part of the community, even though we travel too much. To yeah. be really part of the community, it still feels mm-hmm. better here. Um Okay. By the way, did you notice I, I still have my bracelet on? I did. Uh, That's so sweet. Your girls gave me the bracelet. I wore this to, the, to my dermatology appointment today. Oh yeah. With which I have a skin. Can you can you does my look red? No. I had a skin tag removed. Oh wow. And then I have these little zip, they like freeze things on your head. Oh, how so if you fun. see me like <laughs> doing something weird, I'm with a dermatologist. <laughs> but I just I was looking down at the uh, when I was at the dermatologist, it's like. I'm a bracelet guy. You are. I've never been a bracelet guy before. I know. Have you seen Joey? You wear so many of them. I that, can't. I can't commit to that. I can never commit to that. No. And I would say if I didn't know Joey, I would question him on <laughs> like bracelet guy. Like, yeah. Why he's do you have so many to, bracelets? To being a bracelet guy. He is. It's like being a hat guy. Like I've got a little. Is it a fedora that you wear? Yeah, I saw it in the Italy pictures. Yes. Yes. And I'm like, I'm. I can't commit to being a hat guy. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot of stuff. <laughs> I felt good. In Europe, I was fine wearing it. Yeah. I, I've worn it like twice. Here? Here in the United States. In the United States or in Lake Gunnersville? Um, I don't know if I've ever worn it in Gunnersville. <laughs> I, wore it in, I wore it in Nashville one day. Okay. That tracks. And I wore it in Denver one time. You can wear it there. And I just felt, I didn't feel like me. Well, then don't do it. Well, But then I, I saw the picture in Italy and I'm like, I like that. Yeah. You have to feel comfortable in it, though. Yes. So, like, get another bracelet and just see how it feels. I got to go two bracelets <laughs> and another hat. What if I'm bracelet guy and hat guy? Man, I'm I tell, learning all sorts I'm, of new I'm stuff about yourself. You can, I, can I show the crowd this? I don't know if they can see this. I do like can those they see shoes. This, yes. So, these I bought in Italy. And <laughs> they have zippers. So, you zip that thing down and you never have to untie your shoe. You just zip that and take the shoe off. That's impressive. I'm like, how was that not invented years ago? <laughs> I don't know. And they're stylish, It's too. probably been around for a while, but this is making me laugh because you were saying, which twin was it earlier that was like, hey, Scott, look at my shorts. <laughs> same thing, same feeling, look at my shoes. Yeah. Look at my new shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is, um, when did you start liking R&B music? <laughs> 
Uh, well, when I moved to Orlando, our middle school had these weird parties. Okay. Um, dan- dances, sorry, not weird parties, dances. Okay. Like the middle school hosted yeah. dances okay. at um, a place called Rock Haven. Everybody refers to it as Rock Haven. I have zero idea where these dances actually happened. Like if I had to drive to that location now in Orlando. They didn't, I don't. Call, they didn't call it like the rock or anything cool like that? No, they didn't. I mean, Rock Haven, yeah. Um, and so they, that was the first time I had ever heard that type of music growing up in. What, so what song or songs take you back to that moment? To that, like the first time <laughs> I heard it. What is that? What did you hear that was like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Um, well, I heard Boys to Men for the first time. Oh, okay. During the slow dance, slow jams. Yeah. And I was like, this is incredible. Who were you dancing with at that time? What was his name? Oh, I wouldn't dance with anybody. I just liked it. And then like, I wanted to be dancing. You know, I was 13. It was like, you're in that awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so I liked those songs and wanted to be dancing to those songs. I thought they were they were pretty sweet. Um, we had dances at my middle school in Colonial Heights, Virginia, uh, but it was like slow country music. I want to hear know? more artists. Boys to Men, who else was doing Boys that? to Men. Like, doing um, formative R&B, like you fell yeah. in love with the music because of Yeah, who? because of because of that. Um, so I'm, these, this is so terrible because they played absolutely terrible music that was like my gateway entry into this genre. Mm-hmm. Um, who so sings excited. that song? Come on, ride this train. Come on, ride on the train. train choo, choo. And ride it. Woo, woo. That is Quad uh, City DJs. Quad City DJs. <laughs> yes. That's right. Quad City DJs. That was a. Now yeah. we're moving into hip hop. So did yeah. you did you like hip hop more than R and B? Yeah, I do like hip hop more than R and B. Okay, let's 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 yeah. rewind this. So sure. Who else? What other hip hop artists were like at the early yeah. years? The early early years. Yeah. So I uh, from. When I first remember them, yes. you mean? Um, when you started liking it, it helped yeah. create your love for the music. And whoever sings the song, The Dip, I put my hand upon your hip, then you dip, I dip, we dip. This is very pop hip hop right now. It Who, is who's very saying, pop hip hop. I put your hand up on my hip. When you dip, we dip, we dip, <laughs> I put my hand up on your hip. So what's interesting is that I- So you were dancing, you were in your bedroom. I was, I was dancing to down. all these songs and they were like coming on the freak nasty. Yeah, well, I mean, modern yeah. day poets probably. Basically, you know? mm-hmm. yeah. Freak, <laughs> I want to be like in the room with people who are like, what should we call our group? <laughs> I don't know. Nasty. Engine engine number nine. No, we grew up on Fairfax Street. What about freak nasty? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do something for the kids. <laughs> yeah, they'll love it at the middle school dances. <laughs> okay, let's do more of this. I want more. Yeah, so, but I mean, I did start listening to that music and then um, listen to like terrible crunk music in the early 2000s in high school. Like, don't, don't define things terrible. <laughs> Tell well, me. I mean, like raunchy, terrible. Oh, Not like I think it's bad, right. but speaking no. of things that are inappropriate for young ears. I mean, yes. like juvenile and all the. You know, I was really into Bone Thugs for a, a okay. phase. Yes. Um, and then when I was in college, I kind of like circled back, and I was like, if I liked all of this, there's probably more from the past that I would oh, yeah. enjoy. You know what I'm saying? So yes. I wasn't really into it when it was happening in that moment, it was kind of. So that, this is perfect timing. So on the way back from the dermatologist today, this is just a few hours ago. You Val, were listening Val, to Val, No, not with Val, not with Miss Hot Dog. <laughs> but we were listening to uh, a podcast, Joe Rogan podcast. He just mm-hmm. had Ice Cube on. Oh. And um, he was talking about, uh, and, and Val said, did you like, did you like his rapping? She did says, did you like his rapping when you were growing up? <laughs> And I was like, you know, I, I wasn't a huge NWA fan. Like, I liked it. Yeah. But it wasn't like when it hit, I wasn't like, it wasn't it was rhythmic. It's very great. You know, NWA is very aggressive. I like yeah. it even more now than I did then. But I was like, but if you want to hear some stuff that I was listening to when I was younger, that's terrible, and which is why I can't attack my children too much. <laughs> so then I started playing Too Short to Val. Yeah. And other things. Yeah. And it was like, oh man, that was bad. Yeah. Oh, that was just bad. And you can understand <laughs> and you can understand the words. Some of the modern day rap so bad, I'm like, did he say what I thought he said? Yeah. Too short, there's no doubt. Yes, he did say that. Right. He said that. Yeah, it wasn't quite as um well, 
I don't know if it's just that they're saying it so quickly or like maybe we're just not cool anymore. So whatever they're saying, we just also don't get it. Well, and we're, what suppo- that we're not supposed is. to like it. We're so not, yeah. both my kids, my son more than my daughter, but Carson loves hip hop. Yeah. And, and Madeline has as well. And they'll periodically bring me songs like, well, and they know that I love it. Yeah. They're like, we think you'll like this one, dad. And I'm like, <laughs> they, they brought me like two songs out of a hundred yeah. that I like. And oh, I'm, just wow. I'm not supposed to like their music. Yeah, it's okay. It's That's generally, what generally yeah, it's meant to be. It's um, meant to be different. But it is, by and large, not great. Yeah, it's not rhythmic. Yeah, like there's no like, it's hard to dance to some of their music of modern day hip hop. Yeah, I don't know the danceability factor anymore. No. Um, some of the early two thousands rap songs too that came out um, are objectively not great i mean just even what they're oh. actually saying no, in they're, the song, no they're not good at all they're not good at all like there's no point there's not really anything the point is you get to go and you get to like dance dance to it right yeah that's the point that was the whole point so um and again more proof that we are living in the matrix joey lived in orlando until he was 15. okay moved to south florida and finished high school down there his middle, his middle school, my middle school, all went to Rock Haven. It was like for what? all the middle schools. And he went every Friday night. I went every Friday so night. So you were in the room with him. him. So we were there together at the same time. Matrix. Opposite ends of the dance floor, wistfully listening to boys to men. Just waiting for each other. Just waiting. There's something <laughs> there. The Matrix has to make its way into the true culture. Because this yeah. happens all the time where I know it's just coincidences. Yeah. But sometimes, can I hear the biggest, this is the biggest one. Yeah. So Madeline went to massage therapy school in Atlanta, my daughter. Mm-hmm. And she you know, has a visual impairment. And so she took an Uber to class every day. So I'm going to see her. And she's like, Dad, why don't you, and I stayed over with her. She said, why don't you take me to school today? I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. And so we're in Atlanta. She's giving me directions on how to get there. And I'm like, why? Well, I said, when I was your age, so I took a year off college and um when i was 20 and worked at this little marketing company in atlanta it's a great story for another day by the way that year (laughs) of my life doesn't even seem real (laughs) and i said i used to work right over here somewhere and so she she takes me back to her massage therapy school and then we go behind this strip mall into Mm -hmm. this little office complex and it's in the exact same office that i worked in not the same building the same office in the building the exact same location and she was 20. And I was 20 when I did that. Is that not a little weird? It is weird. Yeah. I don't even, that's just. What do you do with that information? I don't know. Nothing? There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Except tell stories (laughs) and get Miss Hot Dog to roll her eyes at me every time I say we're in the matrix. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I really believe in coincidences, though. Either we're being controlled by the matrix or certain things are just predestined, you know, to happen. Of whatever you want to believe, whether you believe in the universe or or God or whatever. I mean, I think I think sappy moment, which is very unlike me. I love sappy moments. Yeah. I mean, I think Joey and I were meant to meet. Like all of these things were supposed to happen. This and is we're gonna dub a boys to man song over this from go, go right ahead. <laughs> Turn the lights down low. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I just think we were meant to and God kept like opening up these windows for us. And because we are both like stubborn or life happens or whatever, we kind of just like almost passed one another Um, because there's just no other way to explain that growing up, somebody randomly had a poster that made me randomly pick a university, you know, 12 hours away Mm -hmm. from where I grew up that I would meet him. You know, that can't, that can't be coincidence. That was supposed to happen. I was having a conversation with, with, my daughter a couple of years ago about karma. She very much believes in karma and it's mm-hmm. a little, little woo-woo a little bit. <laughs> and, I was like, and I said, you know, I don't believe in karma, but I do believe that, you know, kind of the things you put out in the universe, like if you're really good and kind and mm-hmm. you put out good things and you've got, whether you call it energy or what, I think it eventually comes back to you. And she was like, yeah, that's what karma is. I'm like, Dad, okay, yeah. well, okay, I guess I believe in it. Um, yeah. All right. I, I don't know how long we've been going, Britt. Do you know how many? How long um, we've been going? 
So I think we're just for the listeners. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that I ask all the time. Okay. I'm, I may I might make it the question I ask at the end of every show. The closing question. I've asked it. I probably asked you Once. before. Oh. Um, if you could only listen to one musical artist, the rest of your life, you only get their music, but you get all their music. Mm-hmm. You get everything that they've ever done, collabs, solo, band, whatever. But you only get their stuff. Who would it be? Oh man, that's a hard question. I know. And the thing is, since we're on air, you actually have to answer. Now, this is the thing: you could change your mind and email me, and we'll put it in like. I don't think we're sophisticated enough scene. to have show notes yet, but we'll eventually yeah. have show. I bet AI could create our show notes. By the way, we've got some great AI podcast stuff for you guys if you want to know about oh, it. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It cuts, it edits it up, and everything. We'll do it for you. How about that? Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll do this episode for you. Well, yeah, I, mean, I figured you, I didn't think you were offering to edit all of our podcast yeah. episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, great, mm-hmm. and it's being recorded. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh man. So, and you can just walk your way through it. This well, be this journey. is my initial thought is it, it's cheesy, it's hokey, it's what a lot of people would probably pick. But I, I have a soft spot for the Beatles. I just love them. Yes. My mom was like huge Beatles super mm-hmm. fan. And growing up, um, when I would go spend the summer or spring break with my grandparents, they lived in Fairfax, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And um, it was crazy, too. When I was at Ellie's parents' house the other day and I walked down into that basement, I had not smelled a basement in such a long time. Not your Ellie. Not my Ellie. No, Britt's Ellie. Ellie Covington. Ellie Covington. No, Ellie Burns. Covington's. Oh, their house or their parents? In- Yaya's house. house. Yaya's house. <laughs> Brit's in-laws. Brit's in-laws. Yes. Thank you for okay. connecting all that. When I was walking down the stairs yesterday, it smelled like my grandparents' basement. I don't know if all basements just smell the same, but we do not have them in Florida. Right. So that is not something I'd experienced in some time. And it made me think of my grandparents' basement and this moment that I'm sharing with you. My grandmom had all of my mom's Beatles memorabilia down in the basement. Um like magazines that she had as a kid, all of the albums, some of them still with like the cellophane wrappers Mm -hmm. on them. And then she had the big, tall, you know, record player that I think everybody had with the glass case on the front that you had to like, oh yeah, you know, Mm -hmm. push to Mm -hmm. open. (laughs) And I would just sit there for hours and just listen to those records like over and over again. And I could sing them like where the skip was because of the scratch, you know, in that particular song. Um, And so it has that kind of like nostalgia feeling for my parents, my grandparents, Mm -hmm. you know, and then it would allow me to listen to like wings and things of that nature because you said it could be like their solo work or other collaborations. So it would open up some other Paul McCartney, Mm -hmm. you know, avenues. yeah, and I, I I just always found that time period super fascinating and loved listening to all of her records and um, kind of a, just the bummer in that story when we moved to Florida and we were storing the records. My parents did not know that addicts get to be like thousands oh, of degrees during the summer. So they stored all my mom's old stuff up there and then they all got like warped and we weren't able to keep any of them. And we had to, she had to rebuy it all on CDs. That's a bummer. Yeah, which is something you used to listen to music on. This would be interesting. To, it would be interesting to. So I had the same experience. My parents had a bunch of albums, mm-hmm. and I would. There was nothing to do when you were younger in our age. Yeah. Even though I'm older, you still didn't have all the modern stuff. Like, yeah, that wasn't really a thing when I was like a, a young kid, like growing yeah. up elementary school. Yeah. So I can remember I would sit in the floor in the living room with this little trailer <laughs> that I lived in, and they had a little record player, and. There was this little hutch thing that I still remember. I opened it up and it slid <laughs> back, and all their albums were in there. Yeah, and mine were like the, they had that. So my mom was big into Motown, so there were the Drifters Aww. and the Platters, yeah. and the Four Tops, and all these kind of things. And then my dad was very much a, a redneck, and so he <laughs> had like Waylon and Willie, yeah, and Dottie West, um, and a bunch of George Strait and George Jones and Kenny yeah. Rogers. And so I had the, these two things that I pulled from. Isn't that funny? And that is really funny. So the Beatles. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Adrian Jensen, 212 Benefits. Yeah. Um, thanks Thank for you. hanging out on either the first or second episode. Yeah. This was fun. Um, thanks for having it me. It was fun. Yeah. And um, anything else? Wow. When do you leave? 
Where are you going home? Uh, we are leaving Saturday morning. We were supposed to leave Friday, but nobody wants to leave. And we have the house until Saturday. Right. So we will be here till Saturday. <laughs> this, is something, this is something we're going to have to coach me on. I don't know how to wrap things up. Yeah. When I'm at events, every, Val makes fun of me. Mrs. Hot Dog makes fun of me because I'm like, I just want to keep it going. Like, if we have a good conversation. I know. It's like, how do you end it? It's hard so to say. So let's do goodbye. cheers. We'll do cheers. Okay. Yep. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. True love. <laughs> Turn around, we're kicking dirt, we're gaining ground.